Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Simon, bringing you the story of Magic the Gathering. Today, we'll be going in depth with the current story of Liliana Vess. What's happened to her, and where her story looks to be going moving forward? A lot has happened since the events of War of the Spark, and Liliana's character has forever changed. But let's see what's next for the necromancer Liliana Vess. If you guys want the complete history of Liliana Vess up until the War of the Spark, make sure you click the link in the screen now or found in the description below. In short though, Liliana Vess was on a journey for freedom. Freedom from four demons who controlled her very soul. Then again, freedom from Nicol Bolas who controlled her life. In a sense, she was a coerced participant in his scheme to be a god on Ravnica, leading his army of eternal zombies known as the Dreadhorde as their Dark General. It was Liliana who was tasked with leading the Horde into Ravnica to harvest sparks Bolas needed for his godly ascension and, of course, kill any resistance that may form in the attack. Liliana didn't want to be Bolas' puppet and actively worked against his orders as much as she possibly could, all within the bounds of her contract that she made with him, limiting destruction and loss of life as much as she could without directly disobeying the orders of Bolas, which would forfeit her life. One way she did this was by ordering the Dreadhorde to not enter any homes of Ravnica, ensuring those who stayed indoors wouldn't be slaughtered. Either way, a massive loss of life would come as a direct result of her command. It was unavoidable. As the other planeswalkers watched over the horrific scene, especially those with long histories with Liliana like Jason Gideon and others in the Gatewatch, which she was once a part of, they saw nothing but a traitor and looked to cut off the head of the Dreadhorde Snake. Though Jace and others did attempt to kill Liliana, Nicol Bolas intervened, who simply didn't want to lose his useful tool just yet. Still, this pain and suffering she was causing in selfish defiance of her own life was eating at her newly formed soul. She wasn't the monsters others saw at this moment. She was someone scared for her life. Though powerful, she was more vulnerable now than ever. Eventually, that pain became too much and even Liliana was ready to forfeit her life for something bigger than herself. To put a stop to this madness. To stop the one responsible for every bad thing in her life to stop Nicol Bolas. In her final act as a slave, she commanded the god eternal Oketra to let loose an arrow intended to end Gideon's life. As he was riding a pegasus with the enchanted black blade in hand, looking to end Bolas with a single swing, Liliana pulled on Oketra like a puppet, intentionally missing the shot to hit the pegasus rather than Gideon directly, who was the intended target. Gideon lands near Liliana as she decides enough is enough. She would no longer be Bolas' slave. She took command of every Eternal on Ravnica, even two former gods of the plane Amenket, Oketra and Bantu, and attacked Bolas with everything she had, knowing what the immediate result would mean. As soon as the magic targeted Bolas, the contract ruled by the dragon over Liliana was released and the necromancer's body began to vaporize away in burning hot agony. Still, despite this, she ushered the Eternals forward and Oketra and Bantu engaged on Bolas directly. She lasted as long as she could, as she could feel her life begin to leave her. She feared her death, but finally, death was coming. Seeing this sacrifice Liliana was making, connecting the dots of her behavior and this betrayal against Bolas, Gideon realized the grave error he and the others had made in assuming her villainous intentions. She was giving her life for them, all of them, and she was the only one who actually had the power, supplemented of course by the Chain Veil, to fight against Bolas and stop his Dreadhorde. Gideon had just failed, even with his shield, he couldn't get anywhere near Bolas or match his power. Now with his only weapon, the Black Blade, broken, he was useless. But not as useless as you would think, he still had one thing left to give. He reached out to Liliana's burning body, took hold, and gave her the one thing he had left, his invulnerable shield. The magic glowed over her skin and the heat subsided. However, this powerful magic then jumped to Gideon, who no longer had any protection against it. Liliana watched as Gideon burned, sacrificing himself, knowing the cost, for what she could only think they believed was an enemy. And in that moment, Gideon was gone, forever. 
With Liliana's contract expired, finally free from demons and dragons alike, Liliana was able to repay Gideon for his sacrifice. Oketra and Bantu attacked Bolas, along with the other minor Eternals. Oketra was destroyed by Bolas, but Bolas was stabbed in the back by the surprisingly resurrected Niv-Mizzet, the new living guild pact of Ravnica. In that moment, Bantu, the last remaining god Eternal, bit down into Bolas' shoulder and de-sparked him. Using the magic the dragon had given the Eternals to rend the sparks of planeswalkers against him, Bantu would explode from the intensity of Bolas' spark. But the battle was over. Bolas was no longer a planeswalker, and others were able to trap him within his own meditation realm, a prison for all time, watched over by his twin, Ugin, as his jailer. Despite being an unsung hero of Ravnica and the multiverse, freeing herself and countless others from the tyrannical rule of a maddened god dragon, Liliana would find no love from the other planeswalkers outside of Jace who had witnessed her final act of sacrifice and defeat of Bolas, as well as read her mind and learned her motivations. As the rest of the prominent planeswalkers and guild leaders of Ravnica gathered to discuss how to move forward, those enemy planeswalkers who aligned themselves with Bolas would be hunted down and brought to justice. While Jace tried to convince them of Liliana's aid, the decision was made that she detracted from Bolas too late, having caused too much death in the process to be forgiven. Thus, the newest planeswalker to join the Gatewatch, Kaya, was tasked in finding Liliana Vess. Though no one knew where she had run off to, all they knew was that Liliana had taken the gem of Becoming, the one that once sat between the great horns of Bolas, and left Ravnica. Luckily, Jace was able to convince Kaya to just locate Liliana and not try to face her in combat. First off, likely she'd lose, so she should give that information to Jace so Jace could confront her and that would be best for everyone. Kaya left to track down Liliana and inform the others of the Gatewatch. That's what's happened to Liliana's character in the aftermath of War of the Spark, but what's next for the Necromancer? Where does her story go from here? With Liliana now free for the first time in her character's history, no demons, no dragons controlling her, she has but just one plot point left, the Chain Veil. Though free from her contracts, she's still not free of a curse. The Chain Veil, a powerful artifact of immense evil that gives her an insane boost to her necromancy spells, has cursed her as it did Garrick Wildspeaker. Although she controls the voices calling out to her, she's still enslaved, in a sense, despite the events of War of the Spark. Worse still, there's the mystery of the Raven Man, an unknown figure who plagues Liliana's mind, someone who's been with her for a very long time, manipulating her decisions and pushing her towards more power at every turn. We don't know who this spirit may be, only that no one else can see or even sense it when it's speaking directly to Liliana Vess. With these final remaining mysteries as plot points, Liliana looks to return to the plane of Chandra Lar the birthplace of the Chain Veil. The Chain Veil was discovered on the world of Chandralar by one of her former demon lords, Kothofed, and she was sent there to pick it up as a chore. In discovering its power, Liliana took it for herself, not knowing exactly what it was, but believing it had enough power to help free her from her demonic contract. She was right in that, but she wasn't aware that the Veil was created when an entire civilization of shamanistic and dark ogres vanished in a single night, leaving only this Veil behind. Yes, it's pure evil, and beckons her to fully embrace its power. No one knows what will happen if she does. She may turn into a full demon as Garrick almost did, but if any plane has answers for these mysteries, it would be Chandra Lar. It's the next adventure for Liliana Vess. Kaya will track Liliana to Chandra Lar to report it to Jace, who will follow in suit. Together, they will adventure the lush, chaotic mana of the plane in search of dark answers that could lead them to discover the identity of the Raven Man and finally free her from the Chain Veil. They will need to uncover what happened to the Anak Ogres, what ritual tore their souls and bound them to the Veil. How was this cursed artifact created? Liliana and Jace, former friends, former loves, must get answers to truly free Liliana Vess from her past to start a real future.
Liliana, as a character, has been through so much and her story isn't over quite yet. Let me know your own thoughts on what Liliana will do next and what mystery she'll uncover about the chain veil in the comment section below. Make sure you also leave this video a like, be a subscriber, hit the notification bell, and of course share this with friends. All of which goes to supporting the channel. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, see ya.